I'm a stem cell transplant physician. This is the work that I've been doing for over 20 years. I've uh, been involved in pioneering use of stem cells to treat patients with different types of diseases. And what I want to do this morning is I want to be able to try and put some pieces together of the important role of stem cells for regenerative medicine. And when we think of regenerative medicine, we've got to think about what the body normally does, because in every single one, Every single one of us, our stem cells are actually regenerating us on a daily basis. When we are young, we have good regeneration. As we get older, it, we degenerate, but we can stop that process. And important parts of the process is actually the immune system. So the immune system and inflammation go hand in hand, as Dr. Sears showed, uh, explained to you very clearly earlier on. And he actually did a very nice job of it, so it makes my lecture a lot easier because what I want to do is to basically focus in on some of the major issues that we have. I want to look at the, to understand the relationship of stem cells between inflammation and the immune system. And I want to also then show you how we can measure inflammation, measure immune dysfunction, and what we can do about it in chronic diseases. And then in the third part of my lecture, I want to tell you what we can do now. Because everybody, every one of us, we're looking at, we want solutions. We want solutions for our patients, but we also want to have solutions for ourselves as well. Because we are the caregivers of our patients and we need to look after ourselves as well. So what's our dream? Our dream is a healthy aging pattern. We want high quality of life into the late stages of our lifespan with few uh, daily living impairments and we want a near absence of age-related disease. The question is, can we do it? The answer is yes. What this slide shows is the maximum lifespan of different organisms from the mayfly, which is less than a day, up to the giant tortoise, which is over 200 years old. Um, and so within, as humans, we can make it up to 115. Can we? The answer is yes. There's a small group of, pop small group of the population typifi typified by this lady who lived to be 115 years old. Her story was published in the New Scientist in April of this year, and you can read it. But what, it, what she did was she actually donated, because she had a high quality of life and she lived to be over 115, she donated her body to science. And there were some interesting things that were found. But the most important thing that was found was that her stem cells that regenerated her immune system was the important component that allowed her to live to be 115. So what's the problem we face? The problem we face is that we're all growing older and our current population is aging at an unprecedented rate. There are health disparities in those age, age 50 and older. But as we get older, we're finding that diseases are occurring at a younger age. We, we, most people, the age of retirement was 65 plus. But in fact, most people are getting chronic diseases younger than that. And the incidence of cancer is increasing significantly. And the, increase, the di incidence of diabetes is increasing significantly, particularly in younger people. And so healthcare spending will continue to increase. And it's a major problem. So the reality is that we do have an unhealthy aging trajectory and the onset of chronic diseases, a diminished quality of life, and an increased mortality risk. With my solutions, hopefully, we'll be able to do that and be able to have healthy aging so that the 10% of people who normally can have healthy aging uh, and the 80% who don't, that we are spending all of our time looking after, we can change that paradigm. And we have the solutions to be able to do so. There's a, it's not just a single solution, it's a compositive effect of putting all the pieces together. And I want to share with you my experience in stem cell transplantation and what we've been able to do. When patients get chronic illnesses, what, they ulti what ultimately happens is they develop a chronic critical illness. And in the United States, at, every one, at any time, there's about 100,000 people who have these illnesses. And if you look at the bottom of the slide, the health care costs associated with that is $20 billion annually. The number of people who actually make it out of the hospital and go back to leading a healthy life is very low. It's less than 12%. Most people spend about greater than 21 days in the hospital in the intensive care unit and the mortality is high, it's 50%. And these are the chronic diseases that actually contribute to the majority of people getting to that point. So what we're saying is there's another solution. 
I like Dr. Sayer's slides. He talked about solutions, and that's what we've got to look at. Our solution is regenerative medicine. The regenerative medicine I'm talking about is utilizing the individual's own stem cells to repair the tissues, to understand what occurs in youth, and then actually use that same paradigm to treat chronic diseases. So this is a complicated slide. I apologize. But actually, what it shows on, in the middle column is that, in fact, aging starts at a molecular level. It then goes to a cellular level and then the organismal level. So if you look around and you look at your pictures 10 years from when you were, from now you will see the changes that have occurred. And these actually started and continue at a molecular level. Everyone who smokes, they're damaging, they're aging them, themselves. And so if you look on the right-hand corner, there are homeostatic mechanisms which can act to actually repair and regenerate aging. You, if you target each one of these, and there are people working in different areas to target it, then you can see that there can be solutions. And I, the, what I'm proposing to you is to look at each one of those and find solutions. But I'm going to focus on two. The one that says immune surveillance, and the second one that says stem cells for tissue maintenance and repair. So what's a stem cell? It's essentially a cell which, when it divides, reproduces itself. It produces twins. It renews itself. And the other cell forms the tissues. Every single organ in the body has, has stem cells. So in every single organ, you have a stem cell sitting there, and then it's sitting in a niche. And the cells within the niche are producing factors which causes that stem cell to function well, or it causes it to function abnormally. And as we age, the inflammatory factors that Dr. Sears talked about actually causes aging and accelerated aging. So if we can find a way to improve the environment in which the stem cells are sitting, we will improve it at a molecular, a cellular, and an organismal level. So he also talked about the, infl the inflammatory factors, and NF-kappa-beta is one of the main regulatory pathways. It stimulates the genes that produces certain cytokines. The cytokines, I want you to remember, are IL-1, IL-6, TNF, TNF, because you will hear me coming back to that. There are pro-inflammatory pathways, there are anti I'm sorry, anti-inflammatory pathways, and the majority of these are pro-inflammatory. And so, What's the, oops, sorry. What's the significance of inflammation? He touched on it. Inflama as we age, two things occur. We, we go into a pro-inflammatory state, but he didn't talk about the immune system. We, our immune system also degenerates as we age. The combination, the balance of those two, if it's well balanced, we have healthy aging. If we don't, we end up with all of these different diseases. And so in a young person, they're balanced. You have a balance of pro-inflammatory, anti-inflammatory, and the immune system, particularly the innate immune system, is critical. Aged, you have this. What we are saying is that what he said is if you took uh, omega-3s, you can push this up, and then anti-inflammatory mediators. He didn't talk about these, and he didn't talk about the immune system. What I'm proposing is that we can work on all of this. It's a composite, and we've got to look at that.